How you guys doing? Good. How are you? Doing well. Fire away. Last week they said you were one of the more excited people in the draft room when Bayless showed up as a, a Chicago Bears pick. I'm curious as a return man what you see in him and, and, and what gives you that, that excitement about having a chance to work with him. Yeah, I mean, I think we're excited about all our draft choices uh, and what we've done in the draft. Um, what we were able to do, um, I think, is speaks volumes when you go in with the amount of picks we had and then to come out with the amount of picks we end up with. Uh, I thought the personnel did, uh, staff did a phenomenal job um, to speak directly to Valus. I think the whole organization is excited about uh, adding a guy like that. We all just kind of got a feel for him. Um, as a person, and we like him as a person. We like his energy. Um, we like his speed. Um, we like his toughness. We like his athleticism. And uh, we like what he can do. And what he has the opportunity to do is compete here and see if see if he can make those things translate that he did in college uh, to the pro level. And we definitely believe that he can. Is there a return from his college video that to you exemplifies the uh, yeah, I mean, really, we just look at all of them. I mean, we've looked at every return that he's ever returned to football, and then we also look at the ones where he fair caught him. Um, so not one specifically. You just look at every uh, different one, and you look at decision-making and see what type of decisions he makes. Um, is he fearless? Does he catch the ball? Does he get vertical? Um, is he aggressive? And uh, is he a guy you want to add to your football team? And we all felt that way. Uh, so we're excited to have him. And uh, I think he's excited uh, to be here. And that shows through his preparation in meetings, and that showed on the field as well. Will he primarily work as a kick returner? I know he did some punt return at, during his final year at Tennessee. Do you envision him doing both? I envision anybody that has a helmet on that's a returner uh, doing both. So if anyone has a helmet on, we're going to train them at both, and then we'll see what they can do best, and we'll put the best guy out there that helps the Bears be successful. Brian Poles and Matt Eberflus. In the draft and also a couple of the undrafted guys, you got three or four excellent returners. What does that do for you in terms of competition and looking forward to training camp? Yeah, that's a great question, Larry. I mean, I think it does um, it does wonders for the guys, for the players, because they can look around the locker room and see, oh, that guy can return. Oh, he's good. I'm not comfortable, you know. So there's competition there, and it's also it's awesome just to have some options, you know. So it does a it, it's done a huge boost, but we still have a far way to go. We haven't put on pads yet, so but it's a, it's really good to have options. What's it like to be special teams coordinator, first draft here uh, with this group, and you take a Big 12 special teams player of the year, SEC special teams player of the year, and a punter. Um, what does that tell you about kind of this group's uh, focus and emphasis on the importance of, of your group? Uh, I think it just I think it just tells me what we kind of already knew through the interview interview process is that these guys were going to try to uh, commit everything they could to winning on every side of the ball and not just special teams. They're looking to improve the team any way that they can. And uh, some drafts fall where you get some guys like you talked about. Uh, and then there's also some, there will be some surprises of some guys that you didn't know. So that's the exciting part about it. With Gil, with Gil specifically, uh, trying to Gil, what, what do you like about him? Yeah, I mean, we, we like the fact that um, he's got a big leg and uh, he'll have an opportunity to put that on display and compete and, and see what he can do and put his best foot forward. But he's got a big leg. He's got good hands. He can hold well. Um, and he's a really uh, smart and sharp kid that loves football, and he's a good person. So, mm -hmm. You're out here at Rookie Minicamp. Obviously, the fastest way for a lot of these guys to make the team is through your unit. What are you looking for in terms of traits from some of these players? And can you tell, how soon can you tell whether or not they do or don't have those types of traits? A uh, good question. So uh, the one thing that I, I love, and I think we all love, and it's a team-wide deal. It's not just special teams, but a look for speed. All right, speed, explosiveness, um, how fast the guy is, and not necessarily how fast he times, how fast does he play football? You know, and then obviously when we get the pads on, we look for physicality. Is a guy physical? Uh, is he tough? Um, and really, if he loves football, and does he love it 24-7? Or is he a guy that just loves it on game day? Based on all that, uh, who in this of this rookie group uh, do you think has the most potential to be a four-phase special teams like ace 
type of guy? Yeah, that's a great question. It's still really early, and we haven't put on pads. So um, I think that they're all competing right now, and we all like where they all are. I mean, we've been two days now. We just got out the practice field. So I would love to answer that in more detail. But if I'm being honest, uh, I really don't know yet. Um, but I know we got a lot of great options out there we feel fired up about. But you, and even in this, like, so rudimentary type of in- introduction, you see a lot of special teams' uh, capabilities, right, or abilities in, in the way they hustle, the way they – Oh, know, yeah. Sure. Certain things, right? I mean, so, sure. You know, even a, a couple days, it seems like you could, you know, see – a lot of good qualities, right? Yeah, yeah, you definitely can see them, and we try to put them in situations where they have to move in space, where they have to close space, close the distance on uh, if they're going against a returner and close the distance and trying to get close to them, or if they're in a coverage phase and if they're covering and if they can run around. It's only so much that you could do uh, when you don't have pads and you got to kind of wait for training camp. Um, but you can evaluate speed, you can evaluate athleticism, you can evaluate agility, you can evaluate change of direction, and uh, you can also evaluate if a guy can catch or field a punt or kickoff or not. But we got great, we got great options, so I'm happy about that. With someone like Bayless, who I know both Matt Eberflus and Ryan Poles have talked about utilizing him in so many different ways on offense, as a special teams coordinator, do you have to almost come up with like a specific plan with the offensive coordinator of, okay, we know he's probably going to be used a lot on offense, trying to like – I don't know, do the cross-training between offense and special teams so you don't wear him out when he's going to be asked to do so much? Yeah, I mean, I think I think when you it comes to game day, you always talk about that stuff, like, together. Um, you'll meet as a staff and Coach Eberflus and Poles are exactly right. I mean, those guys are – those guys are in lockstep and everything they're talking about, and we are, we're excited about what Valus can do and how many different ways we can use them, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be fun. How would you differentiate the skill set between Valus Jones and Tristan Ebner as return men? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't – they're, they're both different, you know, but they're both um, very competitive, and they both have a chance to compete against each other. So um, it'll be an exciting competition. Uh, there and there are other people on this team that are already here that have returned that can compete as well. So it's, I mean, I know we're talking about the rookies, but it's in a wide competition for the other guys we've had that are here too that have returned some kicks. Khalil can return kicks, uh, Pringle can return kicks. Um, so uh, it's a good problem to have, and you know, hopefully those guys help us on offense and defense as well. So it's all about team. I mean, I know it, to me, I'm a team guy. And, Whoever's the best guy for the team, we're going to put him back there. What qualities do you see in Tristan with the ball in his hands that strike you? Um, he's fast. Um, he's really quick twitch. Uh, he, he covers the ball up well. Um, he protects the ball well, which is, uh, is good for a young player. Um, when he's running with it, he protects it well. You can see that even in the offensive drills when I'm just watching on the side sometimes. But so he, uh, he's got speed and explosiveness. And he's eager. I mean, and it's and again, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say it again, but it's still really early. So yeah, I like to see him run around with the vets out here too. <laughs> well, all the uh, rookies that are a couple of the rookie draft picks that are returners mentioned how much they enjoyed watching Devin Hester uh, growing up. And doesn't mean you embrace being that you're with the Bears now. Do you show them tapes of Devin? Do you talk about Devin? Do you kind of lean into that? Yeah, I think uh, Devin Hester is one of the greatest returners of all time. And I get chills that I get a chance to coach where a guy was so good. I mean, he was just so good. And, yeah, we have – I have shown tape on Devin Hester here. Um, and I've shown it at other places I've been as well because, to me, he's the, he's the model. I mean, he's the standard. And uh, – he was phenomenal, and I uh, hope he gets in the hall soon because I think I, – I don't, I don't know anyone that was better than him uh, in the 16 years I've been doing it. Coach, I know you've been here before, but now – I mean, at Soldier Field before, but being the special team coordinator of the Bears, is there any research or studying you've had to do just about playing special teams at that stadium specifically? And if so, what? Or do you intend to do anything like that before – games get real? Yeah, we, uh, we always do um, studies on stadiums. Believe it or not, I got a catalog and a notebook on every stadium that um, I've ever played in or coached in and uh, what the wind was doing and 
what it was doing pregame and kind of what it was doing during the game. And you just try to take notes and learn as much as you can and be as detailed as you can so that you give the players the best opportunity to be successful. Because that's what I care about most. I want the players to be successful. I want the team to be successful. So what, can, what information can we provide them and what feedback can we give them so that they can play as fast as possible and they can play as physical as possible? With uh, DeAndre Houston Carson, uh, I know you were here when he came into the league. What's it like to be back here and, and have him be kind of a, a core part of your, of your group? Yeah, I tell you what, I mean, I know he'd say this himself that he still has a ways to go, but just to see the maturation process, and he still does have a ways to go. We all do. Whenever you get complacent, I mean, in my job and your job, you guys know it's too competitive. But I will say that I am proud of the maturation process that I've seen with that young man because we did – he was here as a rookie. We did – I was here when we drafted him. And just to see how he commands and leads and he helps people. Now it's like watching a – he's a grown man, but it's like watching a kid grow, you know. And uh, he uh, he uh, definitely has some special qualities and special traits. So I'm I'm happy to see the way that, that he's he's grown and he's improved. Would you use him as an example to the young players now as a you know, day three guy who found his niche, mastered his niche, and turned it into – a lifestyle now for, for, for a long time? Yeah, great question. We already have, yeah. We use him. We use other examples around the league. Uh, we use all type of examples. Terrell Davis, we use um, different type of guys. I mean, we try to show these guys that you can cut your teeth on special teams and you can start there. You can make plays. Austin Eckler, a lot of different guys. Um, a kid I had in San Francisco, Raheem Mostert. I mean, it's a lot of different guys. And that's what I enjoy the most is you get to help guys develop and accomplish their dreams, um, and they can help the team before they become starters. That's my – that's – Carlos and I, that's our greatest day in coaching is when a special teams player gets an opportunity to become a starter, and you know you had just a little piece in helping a kid uh, reach his dream.